Okay, I have to make a quick video talking about this whole UFO nonsense with this guy testifying to Congress that aliens or, sorry, non-human biologics are totally real and in government custody and based on all the talk and the comments this has been getting, it feels like so many people are just taking crazy pills and acting as if this suddenly means that all UFO sightings have secretly actually been legit the whole time and aliens are on our doorstep as if the idea that a guy in a suit or a uniform saying this kind of nonsense suddenly makes it sound more legit, even though he still doesn't have any actual evidence to back up his claims. Ugh. So, look, if you couldn't tell by now, I'm a bit skeptical of this whole thing, but by all means, I would love to be proven wrong. I love the idea that aliens exist and that they've already come to visit us. I mean, I'm almost certain that aliens do exist somewhere out there in the universe, just purely based on statistics. The mere fact that we exist in the universe suggests that, at the very least, these conditions have likely been replicated in another place of the universe at least more than once. But the idea that we have actually been visited by aliens is a whole nother story. So if anyone is somehow watching this video before seeing the news that I'm talking about, first of all, wow, and thank you for the support, but secondly, I'm talking about the recent news about the House Oversight Committee having a hearing about UFOs or UAPs and that these three people who are speaking under oath, so if they're lying, they'll get in huge trouble, are coming out and saying that the government is totally hiding something and that they need to reveal more information about it. But here's the thing, they haven't provided any physical evidence, not even any blurry photos or anything, although one of the officials that was testifying is the guy that was behind the fairly famous 2004 video about the quote-unquote flying tic-tac, as it's now called, and I mean, that's always how these things go, isn't it? Nobody can ever get any clear photos, and it's always super blurry, and all that nonsense, but, you know, actually, I am willing to bet that these cameras and such are able to get clear shots of these phenomena at times, but I'll get back to this point a little bit later since I have my own personal hypothesis about what's really happening here and why no real photos have ever managed to come out to back up these absurd UFO claims. But regardless, to try and stay on topic, on top of the claims lacking any clear material evidence, a lot of what they've said so far during this hearing is clearly just pure speculation. One of them is talking about how the material science of these craft is clearly beyond anything humanity is capable of, and it's like... You haven't looked at the materials that these things are made out of. You're just purely speculating based on the fact that he saw a really fast thing in the sky. David Grush seems to be the ringleader of this group, or at the very least the most famous one of the three, who seems to be doing most of the talking here. But even he admits that he's not actually seen any of the evidence that he's talking about himself. His entire basis for this meeting is entirely founded on him just interviewing random other people who they claim to have seen, you know, actual aliens and crashed aircraft and all this other nonsense. So it's basically just all a matter of hearsay with him collecting all of the testimonies and whatnot from all these other people that themselves don't have any evidence to back up their claims. Like, he famously speaks up at one point about the idea that the U.S. allegedly has crashed craft in their custody and that they contain the biologics that came with some of those recoveries, and then further elaborates that they're not even human, essentially outright stating that the U.S. at least has alien corpses in their custody. But again, keep in mind that the guy has self-admitted that everything he knows comes purely from the testimony of other people, not first-hand accounts. So for all we know, all that David here has done is spoken to a bunch of random people who, have, who could have been anywhere from crazy town banana pants with tinfoil hats to just straight up lying to his face for clout, and then David believed these people and is now simply repeating those claims that he heard straight to Congress. And in my opinion, when you frame it like that, that, all of a sudden, this whole testimony whistleblower nonsense starts to feel a lot less concrete than it may have initially been framed 
by a lot of news organizations. And I do want to be clear that I'm not necessarily accusing these particular individuals of lying under oath. I think it's entirely possible that they believe that w what they are saying. But like I said, everything they talked about is based entirely on just random witness testimony that they've heard. So all that this really shows is that they're really gullible in my opinion. And that's the thing. Last time I checked, pilots aren't meteorologists. Hell, I don't mean to really insult anyone, but I'm willing to bet that not every pilot in the world is exactly a super genius, and the sky is capable of showing you all kinds of crazy things, especially when most people see those things from the ground, so you're getting a whole different perspective of the world whenever you're up in the air. And a certain subset of these pilots are definitely going to be predisposed to wanting to see UFOs. All I'm trying to say is that it's not exactly hard to believe that some people end up seeing what they want to see when they're up there. My point here is that I totally believe these people when they claim that there are hundreds of reports of sightings of UAPs across hundreds of pilots across various organizations. It's just that there's a lot of things in the sky that these people probably have never seen before, or even just things that they never saw out of the corner of their eye before, and things like that, that they're just attributing to this mysterious phenomena, when it's probably just some mundane thing that keeps happening that these pilots just don't recognize. But I will say... There is a non-insignificant -in chance that a good number of these people that they interviewed are also just straight up lying. Or at the very least, maybe they're just taking a story that was fairly mundane and just a case of, oh, that was weird, or I could have swore I saw something under the corner of my eye just now, and then they're exaggerating the details and making a much bigger deal out of it. And you might be wondering, now what motive could they possibly have for lying about such a thing, or at least exaggerating the truth? Well, I mean, there's a lot more reasons than some people may like to admit. For one, like I said, if they're already predisposed to being a quote-unquote true believer, so to speak, then that's all the reason they need. They're going to see what they want to see and report it as such, and probably even twist their own memories in the process. Otherwise, clout is also a perfectly valid reason as well. I mean, think about all these people at UFO conventions that testify about seeing these phenomena and such. If your story is good enough, then not only might you get invited to go on a little vacation for free, but you're also getting dozens if not hundreds of people listening to your story in real life with rapt attention. If you post it online, you might get tens of thousands of views overnight from various UFO believers wanting to back up your story and such. I mean, think about it. If people are willing to commit literal crimes while recording themselves on TikTok just to get a few views while chasing some trend, is it really that unbelievable that people are willing to lie or exaggerate about UFOs for clout as well? I mean, really, when you think about it, telling stories about UFOs is basically just the boomer version of TikTok trends, right? <laughs> Anyways, to be serious though, I mean, people talk about how the reason why we don't know the truth is because people are afraid of losing their jobs if they spoke out about it and whatnot, but like, when has that ever stopped people in the past? Sure, it probably stops a lot of people, but there's always going to be plenty of people who are willing to throw away their job if it means getting famous for these kinds of things. And I think people are seriously underestimating how willing people are to just throw away careers for clout. And that really ties into the whole thing about just how hard it would be to cover something like this up. Whenever people start talking about conspiracy theories like this, all of a sudden the government becomes this hyper-competent organization that is capable of keeping thousands if not millions of people silent and perfectly covering up all actual physical evidence or, or video evidence or pictures or anything. But in reality, all it would take to blow the lid off of all this is one guy with a smartphone to be in the right place at the right time. And again, it might be a profoundly career-ending decision, or even life-threatening. But again, are you seriously trying to tell me that there aren't people that would 100% take that trade-off? 
if you were the person to expose real video evidence of actual aliens in government custody, you would become the undeniably most famous person on the planet overnight. You wouldn't need a career anymore with that much fame. And I mean, maybe the government tries to unalive you for your efforts, but I mean, why would they even bother at that point? If the cat gets out of the bag, killing the guy responsible will only make them look even worse. And I mean, that's just assuming there's only been a single crash that happened once decades ago. If this guy is right and there's really so many sightings that he claims goes back as far as the 1930s and that this is a seemingly common occurrence, then this suddenly becomes a much bigger cover-up. That would mean that this started nearly a hundred years ago and this guy was supposedly able to talk to people who have recently encountered quote-unquote biological recoveries from various crashes. So the secrecy would have somehow had to have been maintained through all of this time. This is the kind of thing that goes beyond individual governments. This would require international coordination to work. And one that has allegedly been working together for this over the almost its entire century. Are you really telling me that the US and the USSR were working together to cover up sightings of aliens during the Cold War? Or even that the US and Russia of today are continuing that same effort? Or that a random country like North Korea hasn't managed to spot clear evidence of these things? And as a result, they've been working with everyone else to also keep this secret? Like, nobody's blown the lid on this after all this time? But of course, you might say, well, I mean, there are tons of UFO whistleblowers that come forward that, like I said, these aforementioned UFO conventions. So how do you know that those people aren't all the leaks that you would expect from such a massive cover-up? But again, all these people are just telling stories, and yet not a single one of them has managed to come forwards with any concrete evidence to back up their claims beyond just blurry images. Not to mention that, like, we're comparing basic human senses to billion dollar military equipment here. Are you seriously telling, trying to tell me that all of these people are able to see alien craft with their naked eyes, and yet the dozens of sensors and cameras on these sorts of high-spec military vehicles are never able to get anything better than a blurry fo photo of it? But you know, that's always the paradox of these kinds of UFO sightings, isn't it? All throughout the whole 20th century, people would report seeing these kinds of UFOs, usually a big spike whenever a popular sci-fi movie would come out, but I'm sure that's completely unrelated. And, uh, you know, the only pictures that would ever come out to try and back up these claims would always be out of focus and blurry. But of course, at the turn of the century, picture technology was very limited. And yet, as time has gone on, we've reached the point where not only are HD cameras commonplace, but almost everyone everywhere on the planet is carrying around a high-definition video recorder in their pocket at all times. And yet, the only evidence that we're ever able to get is only always out of focus and blurry images that are never able to conclusively prove one way or another that they're even pictures of any kind of artificial craft, let alone an alien one. But there is an answer to this paradox, which is the thing that I was alluding to at the start of the video, and that is the idea of survivor's bias. Now, this is actually kind of a counterintuitive concept at first, if you haven't heard of it before, so I'll do my best to explain it. The idea, as far as I can tell, mostly comes from a case during wartime when planes would come back from battle, and naturally people would record where they took damage so that they could decide what locations would be the best to focus on when putting on new armor in order to try and better protect them. After collecting a ton of data from all the planes that came back, they noticed that there was actually a pattern in the results that stood out. Seemingly all the planes universally only had damage to the tips of the wings and certain parts of the fuselage. So the initial conclusion that one might reach upon looking at this data is that the only places that planes get shot are in these weird locations and thus these are the places that need armor. But the important factor to consider is that we're only looking at the planes that came home. We're obviously not collecting data from the planes that 
didn't come home. There's no reason to suggest that the planes only get shot in these places. And in fact, it's pretty obvious to assume that planes get shot pretty much everywhere. Thus, the only reason why there's no damage recorded on things like the engines and the cockpit, things that you'd expect to be pretty important in keeping a plane operational, is because those are the sorts of things that when they do get shot, the plane doesn't get to come home, and thus that plane doesn't become a data point. Thus, somewhat counterintuitively, you actually want to increase the armor plating of the places where the planes haven't gotten shot, because those are the places where if you do get shot, you don't get to come home. Now, what does this have to do with UFOs? Well, I think that this is the exact same reasoning behind why every single piece of quote-unquote hard evidence of UFO sightings that have actually been captured on film always ends up being this sort of nonsense, blurry, out of focus, hard to actually make out what it is kind of footage. Just like with the damage of the planes, there's no reason to suggest, especially in today's day and age, that when people see something weird in the sky, that they're incapable of getting a good video of it. The issue is that when you do get a clear shot of the thing you're looking at it, it usually ends up not being a mysterious object after all, and ends up being something explainable. The only images that you're going to take that are unexplainable are the images where the subject is all blurry and out of focus so that you can't actually make out what it is. So thus, just like with the planes, the images that people take where the object is in focus never end up making the news because it wouldn't be newsworthy that somebody thought they saw a UFO, but when they took a picture of it, it turned out to just be some kind of weird bird. But if you took that same image and you instead took it out of focus, all of a sudden it's a mysterious unknown entity, and then that becomes newsworthy and everybody hears about those instead of the more mundane, oh, I guess it was just something weird like a weather phenomenon kind of stories that aren't actually newsworthy. So yeah, hopefully if you were freaking out about aliens and such from all this, then maybe I've brought you back to your senses. But if you're still convinced that this is anything more than a nothing burger of a story, then by all means, feel free to let me know and down in the comments. And I, I would love for aliens to exist and to have visited Earth, but... I'm going to need to see some actual evidence before I believe it, and random people claiming to see something they don't recognize out of the corner of their eyes paired with random blurry images, that just ain't gonna do it for me, Chief. But hey, if something really does come of this, I'll happily make a follow-up and go over whatever meaningfully new information comes out about it. I mean, like I said, I would love to be proven wrong and that and to learn that the universe is full of alien life that has visited Earth and whatnot. But I just don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, if you want to maybe see me make a follow-up video to this, then feel free to leave me a like and a subscribe so that you can get notified of when I make that in the future. But while we're waiting for aliens to finally arrive on Earth, I guess I'll see you guys next time.